G'day, I'm Michael P from Waves, and today we're going to talk about Waves Tune. It's not a plugin you hear talked about a lot, but if you're doing any kind of vocal comping or pitch correction, this plugin is going to give you the most transparent results out there. So today, I'm going to show you how to get that plugin instantiated on a track in Pro Tools and how to do some basic pitch correction and comping. In another video, we're going to show you a bit more and in a bit more detail how to use the plugin to pretty much turn a vocal upside down. Right now though, let's have a look. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is show you how to put Waves Tune onto a vocal track in a Pro Tools session. Here we have our vocal track and the first thing that we don't do is add Waves Tune. The first thing that we do is we create a mono auxiliary track and I'm going to put on that track a plugin from Instruments called Waves Rewire. Now once you've put this plugin on there you can rename it so let's call it Rewire and at that point I don't need to do anything more with that I can hide it. So don't hide and make it inactive, just hide it. Now I can add from the pitch shift area Waves Tune. Now the reason for rewire is so that Waves Tune and Pro Tools lock in together perfectly. So if you see, I'm moving my cursor on the track in Pro Tools, but it's also moving at exactly the pl same place in the timeline in the plugin. So now you've added Waves Tune onto a vocal track in Pro Tools. Okay, the first thing to do after inserting Waves Tune is scan the vocal into the plugin. Now, make sure before you do this that you do set your root scale to that of the song. That way it's going to help give you what I like to call the best edit that you never heard. Now, the other thing to do is to make sure that if you want a really natural feel to the, uh, the uh, correction, you have Formant Correction turned on. If you're after something that's a bit more robotic, then click it once and it'll be turned off. For this though, let's turn it back on. Now, all we have to do now is scan the track. So now let's talk a bit about how to do basic pitch correction with this plugin. One of the things that you want to remember whenever you're pitch correcting anything is that you're after the best edit that you never heard. You don't want anybody to hear what you've done or even that you may have done a correction there. So remember, everything is in moderation. Don't just tweak things to the extreme because it doesn't end up sounding human. So let's look at our second part here. And I'm driving away. Okay, so we can scroll down here and with the magnifying glass, if I draw a square over this part here, it'll bring it up into focus in the full window. And I'm driving away. Okay, so now let's go back to the main cursor tool and you'll see okay so this part here which is the build up and I'm I want to just tighten that up a bit but what I don't want to do is this I don't want to put everything on the same note because that doesn't work so I can undo that if I did make that mistake I'm going to grab that roll up just by clicking and dragging across it and I'm going to move everything up one semitone. So now, and I'm driving away. And that's nearly got it where I want it to be. But now, because everything's going up on a bit more of an angle, I need to fix this part here. So I can use the note transition there to pull that back down and make it a bit tighter. So now I end up with, and I'm driving away which is exactly what I'm after. I want something really tight, but very, very subtle. Now this part here, driving away, driving away. You'll notice that if I have it highlighted here, it's also highlighted in Pro Tools. If you look at the Pro Tools screen underneath the plugin, you'll see that they are locked together. So now, driving away. I just want this driving to be exactly on the note all of it. So I can do one of two things. I can either click and highlight that note and drag it up, or I can click and surround all four of those little areas and I can double click the note. So I can double click A and that will put everything there. At that point in time, because I'm looking at the green line, which is the correction, the orange line is actually the original, with no transition, I can just tighten that up a bit. So now, if I highlight it back to the full loop, and I'm driving away, that's too much. So let's pull that note transition back down again, and I'm driving away. 
This one part here, I need to pull down because he was a bit sharp. And I'm driving away. Now, that part is where I want it to be. However, way, I want a teeny weeny bit of vibrato I want there. He didn't sing it, but that's okay. We can create it. Let's go over to the vibrato section, and I'm going to turn on synth vibrato. Now, with depth, I'm going to pull depth down to about minus 20, and we'll end up with the first part of the vibrato creation. And I'm driving away. Okay, now that doesn't work because when a singer does vibrato, you usually find that it gets built into it's It's like a build. So that's where we change the attack. So let's push the attack up so the attack is half of it. So now we end up with... And I'm driving away. That is a nice tiny polish on a vocal that it doesn't sound like it's been edited. 